Good morning again, boys and girls. I'm Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to tie for you uh, this little fly here called Mike Mercer's Missing Link. Um, and this is a fly that I've always really liked, and at the same time, I've always hated. Um, and I really like it because it's uh, got such a such a cool profile. You can see it's got spent spent wings, a parachute tackle, a hair wing that sort of crosses for a caddis or a mayfly. I kind of set it that uh, kind of off angle skinny little body um, and at first glance it seems like it's simple enough the things I don't like about it is this sucker is a little hard to tie um, and it's taken me a long time to figure it out including my uh, maybe hour worth of refresher course this morning as I sat down to tie six or seven of them here I've got sitting on my desk and and finally got it uh, I think I actually even improved on uh, on what I was doing before uh, so I'm gonna go through and, and tie this one for you and uh, hopefully Hopefully this will help, but uh, cool little fly, and obviously this can cross for a caddis or a mayfly or a spinner or a, a miller moth or a, uh, any variety of critter bug, and I like flies like that. You know that about me. So um, I'm going to tie this on a Tiemco 100 SPBL, um, which is sort of my dry fly hook of, of favor. Um, Mike ties it on a black hook, which is totally cool, but... Uh, um, most of those hooks are fine wire, and I like this little bit stouter wire on this on this hook. Uh, so I'm going to start off with uh, a size 16, and you know, obviously, you could tie these in whatever sizes you want, um, <clears throat> and for that matter, in all sorts of different colors. This one's going to be an olive one, um, but you could tie it. You know, there's a yellow version, an olive, a caddis version, um, a yellow Sally version. I said that. Um, just wanted to reiterate that for you. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off with some olive done a dot thread. And I'm going to start it about maybe like three hook eye lengths back from the eye. And just get a jam knot on there. And then I'm going to take a piece of pearl crystal flash. And I'm going to catch that and tie that in along my near side of the hook. And I'm going to wrap back over the tag end of the thread and the crystal flash all the way back. Even down around the bend just a little bit here. And then I'll bring my thread back up. And I'm going to build just a skinny little body. Um, you know, I'm tempted to, to build a little bit of a thread taper, and I usually do, but I like to keep this fly um, pretty skinny here on the body end. Um, you know, one of my, my rules are when uh, fish are being jerks and being real picky uh, to put on a fly that's harder to see for you. Um, and what that means is a fly that is either darker color, smaller size, or sits lower in the water. Um, and now I've sort of worked into that um, sparser. Uh, fly that is tied more sparsely, so even skinnier. So um, I don't know that you can go too skinny. Or you probably can, but uh, uh, you can see how thin that body is. Just a, a slender little thread body. And then I'm going to take my pearl crystal flash and I'm just going to rib it through the body. Let's try that again. <clears throat> With just nice, evenly spaced turns. There we go. And I'll tie that off. Now it's not a bad idea on a body like this to put a little head cement over the top of that. Um, you can certainly use solar res. Um, I think head cement's probably a little lighter on dry flies, doesn't weigh the fly down as much. Um, one of the things with UV resin, I see it used in so many places these days. Um, and it's, you know, it's fantastic material. I'm not down and in it at all, but uh, packing it in on a dry fly and coating in a dry fly body with a big, heavy coat of that um, definitely has, has an effect on the flotation. Um, so, just going to use some head cement there. Now for the spent wing, I'm going to use, um, this is just some dun colored Zelon, and you can use crinkle Zelon or straight, either one. And I'm going to tie this in here at the front edge, and I'm going to go a couple turns one direction and a couple turns the other direction. And what that'll give me is spent wings. And I usually square my vise up and then just make sure that those are <clears throat> square to the hook. And I don't mind, see how those are just slightly canted back? Um, I don't mind if they're, they're canted back a bit. That's actually gonna, gonna work to our advantage here in a minute. And then we're gonna build a little ball of dubbing. Now what I like to do here, um, and what one of the little tips I just figured out, is I want to make sure I leave myself plenty of room uh, to do the wing and hackle here in front of uh, these spent wings, the hair wing and hackle. 
So I'm going to put a little bit of, this is just blue inked olive colored super fine. And again, you can use whatever dubbing you like here. Um, but when I first started doing this, I was dubbing around the base of the wings and making a big ball right there. And what I ran into is that would cant the wing, the hair wing up um, at a weird angle. And, uh, and because of that, it would also cant the hackle up. Um, so instead of getting a nice horizontal plane parachute hackle, um, I'd have it kind of tilted um, you know, at an angle like so, which I did not like. So what I'm going to do here and what I figured out I'm going to take those two wings and just sort of twist them together. Hopefully they'll stick there. And then I'm going to use this dubbing to build this ball mostly behind these wings. And this will do a couple of things. That's going to help to separate those wings as they sweep back. But also leave us some room. Let me get this out of the way here. Some room in front of the wing to tie the, uh, the hair wing and hackle in. I will finish off with a couple of figure eight turns like so and end with bare thread in front of that ball I'll bring that bare thread right up to the hook eye and back again to that front edge but you can see there's you know one and a half to two eye lengths probably two eye lengths there uh, worth of bare space and you can see that's a fairly prominent ball so I'm gonna again twist that together um, and if you really want to get crafty you can pull it down below the hook and twist those together again. That just kind of holds those out of the way. Um, and they'll move around as I tie, but we'll work around that. So now for the hackle, um, any variety of hackle that you have, grizzly, um, uh, blue dun, any, uh, anything like that will work just fine, even brown. Um, I've got a ginger feather, um, or barred ginger feather sitting here on my desk. Um, that is a really nice color, so I'm going to use it. And you sort of want an oversized feather, a feather that's, you know, at least a appropriate hook size, you know, size 16, if not even a 14 for a size 16 fly. And I'm going to tie that feather in, and you can see I tied it in with the inside up, okay? Um, we're not uh, not going to be posting this to the, uh, to the hair wing. We're going to actually be, just start wrapping it. So um, I want it positioned and tied in in the direction that I want it to wrap, which is inside up. And then I'm going to just whip finish with a couple turns that olive thread. And now I'm going to come in with some GSP thread. Uh, so this is Semperfly Nano Silk. Um, and this is gray. The color doesn't make a huge difference. It's not going to show much. Um, and this is 18 knot, so 30 denier. Very, fi very fine. Um, and I found this makes a huge difference in getting that wing anchored in place tightly um, without a ton of bulk, um, which is one of the issues here. So I start that thread right over the top of that, and I'm going to take some bull elk. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not bull elk, this is cow elk. And I'm going to stack it up, clean it out, stack it up. Um, I did this ahead of time, so you don't hear me pounding the stacker and, and uh, wait for me to clean everything out. But I'm going to take a nice little clean bunch of this cow elk, and I'm going to measure it about a shank length long. And that's from my the edge of my thumbnail, which you can't see there on the screen. Um, measure it back to the bend of the hook. Then I'll kind of grab everything. I'm going to take my thread and make two turns over it. And flare that hair. Put one more tight turn. You can see I'm really pulling hard on that hair as I hold it in place. Um, that hair's not going to move. You can see as I tug on it, there's no more flare. So now I can sweep these butt ends up. And then also sweep the tip ends up. And you can see I just slid my hand back to hold the spent wings back out of the way. Um, and I find it helps to sort of stand this all up like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around the base of the wing with just a couple little parachute turns. And I'll just leave that thread hanging on the far side. So you can see we've got those butt ends out the front. We stood that wing up just a bit. And now I'm going to sweep that that Zelon down one more time just out of my way. You can, actually here, I'll show you another little trick. Um, if I can find my hackle pliers. You can take, oh, I just spied my hackle pliers. You can take those wings and pull them down and clip them in your hackle pliers and then clip that into your material spring or just back out of the way to hold those down. You can even just let them hang. Um, that'll hold those wings out of the way while we're about to wrap our hackle. I bent up one of those tips there, which 
I'm not too turned on by. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift up the butt ends of the wing. I'm going to take my parachute hackle, and in my case, tie in left-handed, I'm going to go clockwise. And I'm going to go four or five turns. I like to kind of make this a little heavy on the hackle. And I'm sort of working up the post. Then I'll take that last turn down toward the bottom, like so. I'm going to reach over the vise and pick up my thread, and then come between the hackle and the hook to tie that feather off just like I would on a normal parachute. And as I come over, I'll drop on the far side of the hook eye. Then I can come in and trim my feather out. And there's typically a little bit of cleanup that you need to do once you're, uh, once you're at this point. I can get rid of my hackle pliers there. Got one weird little hair there. There we go. So now my thread's going around the hook again. I'm going to close my fingers under the hook and sweep this hackle up and back. and just make a couple more turns here behind the hook eye. And then I'll come in and whip finish. And what I'll do there is just hold everything back again. This is sort of the old way. We're sort of spoiled by the, the new way of tying parachutes. Um, that's how you used to have to tie a parachute off before we came up with the, the easier method that we use these days. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, now I'm gonna take all these butt ends Try to get them all in one tight little bundle here. And I'm going to bring my scissors down from the top and trim those short. Just into a short little stub on top. And while I've got the fly turned here, I'm going to any of my hackle that's facing down. And because you wrap that hackle sort of through itself, it's going to be pretty disheveled. You're not doing it wrong. That's, that's sort of part and parcel to, to how this fly works out. Um, but anything that's, that's facing too far down, I'll trim out. And then I'm going to trim these, these spent wings just here at the bend of the hook. And try to keep them fairly square. You can prop that wing up a bit. That's one of the cool things with this fly is it's, uh, um, it's malleable. And what I mean by that is if you're fishing this fly and you've got it sort of with the upright wing and uh, maybe you have a, a fish come up and eat it and uh, then you throw it at him again, you, you know, you miss him and you throw the fly at him again and he doesn't want to eat it because he recognizes it. Um, one of the cool things with this fly is you can, you can sort of flatten that wing down, change the profile a bit, you can stand it up, um, you could rag up these spinner wings underneath. Um, you can sort of change the profile of the fly while you're fishing it without changing flies. Um, so you can kind of give them a few different looks. Um, so now what I'll do here is I'm going to come in and put just a little shot of head cement there along that thread base. The big takeaway I had this morning tying this is to make sure I left a little space there between the spent wings and the hook eye so that I had uh, room to not jam that hackle right up against uh, the base of that dubbing ball. And you can see that that hackle is sort of angled off. Um, you know, it's got a, a bit of an angle to it. Um, and that's all part and, and part and parcel to this fly. Um, but kind of a cool little fly, isn't it? Um, just generic, buggy, um, bits and pieces of a bunch of different bugs. Um, pretty cool little bug. Um, no surprise that it comes from Mike Mercer. He's got lots of cool stuff. Great tire. Uh, so that's, uh, that's my first fly of the day. Um, on video anyway, it's uh, my, my seventh or eighth since I was warming up, um, but I'm, I'm happy with that. Kind of a ratty little missing link, but cool little fly. I think you should tie some up. Um, click like and subscribe and uh, maybe send a letter to your, to your cousin and tell him about our uh, YouTube page and our fly tying videos. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe he'll talk to you at Thanksgiving this year. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good morning. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven. Take care.